In this lesson, we are going to look and see how to do the Pythagoras theorem. So what we're going to need first is a 90 degree triangle. Then from that 90 degree, draw a line to the opposite side at 90 degrees. Like that. This is the situation that we need in order to do the Pythagoras theorem. So I'm just going to quickly give some letters here like A, B, we'll call that B1, B2, C, D, that'll be D1, that'll be D2. Now, if I had to ask you how many triangles can you see, some students would say one, some would say two, but the correct answer is that there are three. There's this pink one over here, there's this blue one over here, and then of course there's the big green one. So there are three different triangles. What we are going to now do is we are going to try to prove that all three of those triangles are similar to each other. But to do that, we need to do one extra thing. We need to either let angle A, for example, or angle C equal to something like X. It just makes our proof that much easier. So we say something like, let angle C equal to X. Okay, so we do that. Now, you should try and find every single angle on this diagram. So I'm going to start off with angle B2. So angle B2 is going to be equal to 180 minus 90 minus X. That's because of some of angles on the triangle or of the triangle in the blue triangle. And that's going to be sum of angles in the triangle. And if you had to go work that out, you'd find out that B2 is equal to 90 minus X. Now we can work out angle D1. Angle D1 is simply 180 minus 90 degrees. And that's just because of angles on a straight line. And so that's going to give us 90 degrees for D1. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to work out angle A by looking at the big green triangle. So we can say that angle A is equal to 180 minus 90, which is this 90 here, minus this x. So I'm working in the big green triangle. And that's just going to be because of sum of the angles in a triangle. And so angle A is going to end up being 90 minus x. And then lastly, angle B1. So I'm going to work in the pink triangle and I'm going to use angles in a triangle. So I'm going to say that B1 is equal to 180 minus 90, which is this D1 over here, minus angle A, which must go in a bracket because it's more than one term. And if you had to go work all of that out, you would eventually find that angle B1 is equal to X. That's our first step complete. We have now found all of the angles in the diagram. Step two, we need to prove that all of these triangles are similar to each other. So I'm going to start with the pink and the, and the blue triangle. I'm going to try to prove that they are similar. So we can say in triangle, now let's take the pink one first, which is ABD, and triangle. Now I'll take the blue one, which is DBC. Now the order doesn't matter when you're writing this out. You're just letting the teacher know which triangles you are working in. So angle A in the pink one is the same as angle B2 in the blue one because they're both equal to 90 minus X. Angle B1 in the pink one is the same as angle C in the blue one because they're both equal to X. And then lastly, angle D1 in the pink one is equal to D2 in the blue one. And so then we can say, therefore, triangle ABD is similar to triangle BCD. See how I got the order correct there? And then I'm going to say that the reason is angle, angle, angle. Great. So we've proven that those two triangles are similar to each other. Number two, let's go work in the pink one and the green one. So I'll go with ABD again. 
but now we're going to go with the green one which is going to be A, B, C and that order might not be correct uh, but we're just letting the teacher know which triangles we are working in. So in the pink one, angle A is going to be the same as angle A in the green one because they are common. That's a common angle in both of those triangles. Then I'm going to say angle B in the pink one, which is this here, is the same as angle C in the green one because they are both equal to X. And then angle D1, which is 90 degrees in the pink one, would be the same as this whole big angle for the green one, which is going to be angle A, B, C. Okay, that's 90 degrees. And so yes, we can say that those two triangles are similar. So we can, and so therefore we can say that triangle A, B, D is similar to triangle A, C, B, making sure that your order is correct. And that's angle, angle, angle. And then lastly, number three would be the blue one and the green one. So the blue triangle and the green triangle. So in triangle B, C, D, and triangle. Now the big green one would be ABC. Okay, so I'm gonna say angle B2, which is in the blue one, which is 90 minus X. Now what is that in the green one? Well, in the green one, 90 minus X is this angle A. So we can say angle A. Then angle C, in the blue one is going to be the same as C in the green one because they share that angle so that would be common and then we could say that angle D2 which is in the blue one is 90 degrees and so in the green triangle the 90 degrees is this whole one so that's A B angle ABC and so then we can say therefore triangle B C D is similar to triangle a, C, B. And that once again is due to angle, angle, angle. And so we're about halfway there. So what we've done, just to make sure we're all on the same page and that you guys all understand, we have proven that all three of these triangles are similar to each other. What we're now going to do is we're going to take each of these statements, number one, number two, and number three, and we're going to write out the fractions, or you know those ratios that we normally write out whenever we're doing similarity? That is what we're going to go do now for each of those. So for the first one, which says that triangle ABD is similar to triangle BCD, we can then say that AB over BC is equal to BD over CD, which is equal to AD over BD. And the reason that we are allowed to say this is because of similar triangles. What you then do is you look for the repeating letters or the repeating sides. So the repeating sides in this one is BD and BD. So what we do is we do cross multiplication with those four over there and that would eventually give us that BD squared is equal to AD multiplied by CD. Okay, so number one is complete. Now for number two, we can say triangle ABD similar to triangle ACB. And now we can go do our ratios. So AB over AC equals to BD over CB, which is equal to AD over AB. We then take the repeating parts, which in this case is AB and AB. So that means we'll take these four you then do cross multiplication and you would find that AB squared is equal to AC multiplied by AD. Oh, and I should have given a reason here. Similar triangles. And then lastly, we can now do the third scenario, which is when triangle BCD is similar to triangle ACB. And so we make our three fractions again, and that's because of similar triangles. And so you look for the repeating part, which is BC and BC, and then you do cross multiplication, and that's going to give us BC squared is equal to AC multiplied by CD. Great. And so those are three important parts that we have there. So there is this part, this part, 
and this part over here. So what we now have is three of these formulas that we generated. Now we can we are almost finished guys hang in there so we're trying to prove Pythagoras's theorem now if we did do Pythagoras's theorem we already know from like grade 9 that this side squared plus this side squared should in fact give us this side squared but let's go let's let's just go take a b squared and let's plus it with b c squared and let's see what happens so we can say a b squared plus bc squared and let's see what that gives us well we know that ab squared is ac multiplied by ad plus now bc squared plus ac multiplied by cd then what we can do is i'm just going to quickly write this down again you can take out a common factor here of ac so you take that out as a common factor and then you're left with ad plus cd but now look closely at ad plus cd so ad is this and CD is this. So if you add them together, that's the same as the length of AC. So we can change this to AC multiplied by AC. And let me just quickly write here AB squared plus BC squared. And so we can eventually see that AB squared plus BC squared is equal to AC times AC, which is AC squared. And that is Pythagoras. Pythagoras tells us that AB squared plus BC squared is equal to AC squared.